Dear Sub, don't worry, I'm going to show you how to make your fancy staggered grid effect. And then I'm going to show you exactly where you messed up with your request. It always begins with a div. And inside of this div, we're going to need some tiles. But along with those tiles come a couple of problems we need to solve. We need a grid that's responsive, but not responsive in the sense that its tiles resize, like if we were to set display to inline block and throw a percent on the height and width. No, we need the number of tiles to change such that our grid always appears uniform, no matter the size of the window. First, we're going to need to calculate the exact number of tiles required to fill the available space. Let's choose an arbitrary tile size, like say 50 pixels, and then use that size to calculate the number of rows and columns that we can fit within the window. Now let's pretend we're React for a moment and create some HTML in our JavaScript. In a new function that takes in an index, we'll create a div with the class name of tile. In a second function, let's pass in a quantity and create an array with that number of elements that we can iterate over to append our desired quantity of tiles to our wrapper. We can now call this function passing in our pre-calculated number of tiles. That's a great start, but you might be wondering what happens when we resize the screen. Fortunately, all we have to do is add a resize listener that simply clears out our wrapper, recalculates the number of tiles, and then adds back the corrected quantity. So now we know the number of tiles that can fit no matter the size of the screen, but how in the world do we size them in our CSS? Pixels are too static. Percentages won't maintain the uniform look we're going for. But what if we tried using grid? Now, grid is a bit of a doozy, so we won't have time to properly cover it here. But for this demonstration, you just need to know two things. One, we'll set the wrapper's display to grid. Two, we'll define the number of rows and columns using the fractional unit, which essentially just tells the elements to fill the available space. You can define the number of rows or columns manually, or you can use the repeat function to do that for you. So how are we going to inform our CSS of the number of rows and columns we defined in our JavaScript? Well, we can fix that problem using custom CSS variables. Let's set a property for rows and a property for columns, and then use these properties to assign the corrected values in our CSS. And with that, we finally have a uniform responsive CSS grid. Now for the fun part, the swagger, or I mean, stagger. Fortunately, libraries like AnimeJS and GSAP make this part really easy. Let's add an on-click handler to each of our tiles and pass in its index. We'll call AnimeJS and pass in some configuration. We need to tell it what elements we're targeting via a class name, and then what property we'd like to update. So we'll add a list of RGB colors, and then cycle through our list using the modulus operator and a new variable to keep track of our click count. Now, when we click on a tile, the background colors of all of our tiles are updated. Adding a stagger to this effect is very simple. Let's add the delay property to our config and call the anime.stagger function, passing in a delay value and letting anime know the number of columns and rows in our grid. To change the stagger's origin point to the currently clicked tile, all we have to do is tell anime the index of the tile that was clicked. The final thing you requested was that the borders be removed. To do this, let's simply remove the outline property from our tile. And I have to admit, at first, I totally agreed with you that it looks better without the outline. But here's where you done messed up, friend. By telling me you didn't want the outline, I took it as a challenge. A challenge to both you and myself to find a way to make this effect look awesome with the outline. So I tell you what, as a bonus, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Let us begin our journey to awesomeness by changing the background of the body. We'll set it to a linear gradient to the right ensuring that our first color is the same as the last. We'll set its size to 200% and then create an animation that pans its position from zero to negative 200. When we apply this animation to the body, we get an infinite looping gradient effect. Now to update our tile, let's add the before pseudo element to each tile and give it a dark background color. Instead of sizing it the traditional way, let's leverage the inset trick as follows. By setting the position to absolute, and the inset value to 0.5 pixels, we end up leaving a half a pixel wide area around the edge of each tile where we inset our before element. By applying this to each and every tile, what we're left with is a grid effect where the borders around each tile are transparent, allowing us to see what's behind them. And what did we put behind them? A sweet linear gradient on an infinite loop. And now, instead of using AnimeJS to update the background color of our tiles, we can instead use it to toggle their opacity between zero and one. Now, clicking a tile reveals our beautiful gradient. 
What's more is that by also toggling a class on our body, we can fade in and out some additional content that could be used as a pretty awesome website header. So, which do you prefer? The gradient border version or the borderless rainbow version? Let me know what you think in the comments and I hope to see you in the next one.